Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching and for subscribing. And if you're just visiting, please consider subscribing. So today I want to talk to you about cherry fragrances. I used to not enjoy this note at all. A couple of years ago, I really didn't like cherries. And then something happened, something changed. Um, I don't know if it happened when I tried Lost Cherry. I can't remember to be honest or if I already liked this note by the time I tried it, but as they say, the rest is history. Now it has become one of my favorite notes. I really, really enjoy it in fragrances. I can't say that I have a ton of fragrances where this note is prominent, but uh, I do have a few and I want to talk to you about these fragrances today. Now, what kind of inspired this video was a new fragrance that I purchased recently. Uh, it's a new release of a cherry fragrance that I decided to try. It was a blind buy. And so I am going to start with this fragrance. Now, the fragrance that I'm talking about is Raw Cherry from Aaron Terrence Hughes. Of course, I watch Aaron. Uh, you know, I, I know who he is. I know that he has his own house now. I have wanted to try his fragrances for a while. It just kind of um, never happened. But when this cherry fragrance came out, I knew I had to get it and I had to try it. And so far, this is the only <laughs> fragrance from uh, this house that I have tried, have not tried anything else, although I definitely want to and I definitely plan to. So let's start with, with this fragrance. Of course, I'm showing you here the um, uh, outside packaging, the box, uh, pretty simple, uh, you know, nothing to it. You open it up, the bottle stands in here. I took it out already. So let me show you the bottle again the same. I think um, all of his bottles look this way now. So really simple black bottle with this little um, label. The bottle is quite heavy. I'm not sure. Is it glass? Sort of sounds like glass. I am not sure. The cap is magnetic, which is nice. You know, I will be honest with you. I can say that this is uh, my favorite looking bottle, not at all. Uh, although I love simple bottles, perhaps this one is a little bit too simple. And I think, you know, I think what kind of bothers me a little bit about it is that the label is really here on the top. Like, I don't really understand why it's not in the middle. I'm a little bit um, OCD about certain things. And, you know, I love things to be symmetrical in the middle or perfectly straight. You know, it's my own issues and it kind of bothers me a little bit that the label is so high up and not in the middle. But, you know, again, who cares about that? We're, we're here to learn about this fragrance and to find out how it smells. Is it good? Is it not? I think a question that um, many have is, is it similar to Lost Cherry? I think by now kind of Lost Cherry has become probably the most talked about, the most famous cherry fragrance, you know, and many other uh, cherry fragrances get compared to it. So let's talk about all of that. Now, Let's start, of course, with the notes because it's a new fragrance that I've never talked about on this channel. So the notes are cherry extract, sour cherry, mandarin orange, lemon, dark chocolate, woody notes, tonka bean, vanilla, oud, amaretto, nutmeg, uh, and rose. Okay, I think that's everything. Okay, let me spray it. I'm not wearing anything today. So uh, the sprayer, I will be honest, uh, not my favorite either. It kind of makes really um, short and abrupt sprays. Uh, but you know, again, that's not the most important thing to me. So really, it doesn't matter. Now, let me start with uh, kind of a the comparison that I mentioned. Is it similar to Lost Cherry? In my opinion, it is not. 
Yes, both fragrances feature this note, but they're completely standalone fragrances. I would not say that they're similar at all, except for the fact that both have a prominent note of cherry. So let's get that out of the way. This is in no way a dupe of Lost Cherry or a fragrance that's in any way similar to my nose. You know, these are obviously my opinions. Now, what do I get here? In the opening, I am definitely getting cherry. Uh, it's like probably more, a little bit more sour cherry than like sweet cherry. And I am getting a bit of, um, I would say even a little bit of tartness and perhaps a little bit of some kind of greenness with it. I'm not sure where the green elements are coming from exactly, but I do get a little bit of green and just a touch of tart, but it does not make this fragrance unpleasant in any way, you know? It's beautiful. Let, let's start with that as well. I think this fragrance is absolutely beautiful. There is a little bit, just a light, light touch of powderiness. That's how it is in the opening for me. Now, the fragrance definitely goes through uh, developmental stages. It doesn't stay this way uh, once it dries down, once it develops on the skin. For me, when it develops on the skin, it becomes a little bit darker. It becomes a little bit deeper. It definitely becomes sweeter. Uh, like I always get a little bit of that sour cherry in it, but it's like I have this mix of sweet and sour. I'm definitely getting some tonka in here. It almost like... Um, it deepens the scent. It doesn't, I don't think it gives it any type of like a chocolatey vibe, but there, there are some elements of tonka. Like, uh, I feel like, you know, some depth and sweetness are coming from tonka. I do get a little sort of a slight touch of nuttiness um, and a slight touch of booziness in the dry down. And I think it is coming from amaretto because it doesn't feel like there is like some kind of um, almond or something in here. No, it's it's a slightly different types of type of nuttiness. And like I said, a bit of booziness in here as well. Now, it says that there is oud in here. I do not get oud. I honestly don't get oud at all, although I do get a lot of woody elements. Um, it definitely has quite strong um, base, quite strong backbone to this fragrance, uh, and it, it does come from woody elements. Um, it almost a little bit in the dry down feels like there is a bit of suede in here. Not leather, but a bit of suede. That's how it comes off to me. So this cherry fragrance is a little bit dark, a little bit mysterious, slightly nutty, boozy, definitely very woody. That's how it feels to me. So it's not, it's not the same as Lost Cherry at all. Like Lost Cherry is really warm, happy, bright uh, kind of scent. To me, it feels like a um, warm cherry pie. This one is different. Like I said, this one is darker. This one is definitely more mysterious. Um, I heard, I think it was Marcy, if I remember correctly, when she was reviewing this fragrance, she mentioned that it has sort of a slight animalic touch, I think, in the opening for her. And when I was ordering this fragrance, I was really afraid of that because I, I don't do animalic anything. And, you know, for me, I have to say, I don't get it. For me, there, there are no animalic touches in here at all, which I am thrilled about, you know? So, I think this fragrance is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. 
this is my introduction to uh, the house of Aaron Terrence Hughes. And this is a very, very successful introduction. I love this fragrance. I think it is absolutely beautiful. And it's a completely standalone cherry scent that's not similar to anything else. So I think that's it. Uh, like I said, this video is not just about the scent. I did want to talk briefly about other cherry scents, but obviously because this is new, I wanted to spend a little bit more time on this one. Now let's talk about other ones. Well, I already mentioned uh, what I would consider the queen <laughs> of cherry scents, which is Lost Cherry. There you go. Already said what it smells like, warm cherry pie that's uh, drizzled with some booze and has a little bit of almond added in. I love the scent. Don't care that it doesn't last long. To me, this is very comforting and it is very stunning. So what other cherry scents are worth mentioning in my opinion? Well, of course, I have to mention this unfortunately discontinued beauty, which is Dancing Roses from Victor and Rolf. Uh, we'll never understand why it was discontinued because I think the scent is amazing. Absolutely amazing. This scent uh, also features cherry. I think there is sour cherry, if I remember correctly. There is rose, there is lychee, uh, there is, I think, brandy in here as well. And this one is this amazing combination of, you know, sort of sweet fruitiness that's coming from lychee and sour fruitiness coming from sour cherry. And then you have a bit of booziness. Booziness in here is very, very light to my nose. I don't get a lot of brandy, just kind of a hint of brandy. And then, of course, everything, all of that is mixed with a beautiful rose that's not overpowering. So you have all of the elements of this fragrance playing beautifully together. So I really enjoy this one. If somehow you can get your hands on this one, if you can find it, I would definitely recommend grabbing it. When I was talking about Lost Cherry, I should have mentioned this one um, right after, but I'll mention it now. And that is Cherry Smoothie from Zara. I did a dedicated video to a couple of uh, new Zara releases uh, not that long ago, this one being one of them. It is, um, you know, being talked about as a dupe of Lost Cherry. And although I I would not call it um, an exact dupe. It is definitely, definitely similar. Now, in the opening, for me, um, it is very, very similar to Lost Cherry, almost identical. The differences come in in the dry down. This one, to me, doesn't have the boozy element that Lost Cherry has, and it does have some type of added smokiness that Lost Cherry doesn't have. So there are some differences. That's why I would not call them exact dupes, but they're definitely very similar. If you're looking for uh, an affordable version of Lost Cherry, I think this one is really nice. And as I mentioned in that video, lasting power is outstanding, much, much better than it is in Lost Cherry. Another cherry fragrance that I wanna mention is Cherry Punk from Room 1015. Now, I did a dedicated video on this house where I talked about this fragrance and you know that uh, this fragrance was not for me, but just because it is not for me, doesn't make it a bad fragrance. And I did want to mention it here because I think this is an interesting fragrance. I would call it as a masculine cherry scent. I think many of the cherry scents, although, although I know most of them are unisex and many men wear them, but I think for, you know, quite a number of men, they might seem a little bit feminine. And I think uh, cherry punk, in my opinion, is definitely a masculine scent because in addition to cherry, it has a very, very strong, very powerful note of leather. It's a combination of cherry and leather where even leather overpowers the cherry a little bit. That's why it wasn't for me. I am not a fan of leather. I don't do leather. I can do very light, sort of elegant <laughs> leather, but when it gets um, really serious, no. But I think it's an interesting scent. Again, especially for a man, although I know some women love it as well. But for me, I would call it a masculine cherry scent. And so if you're into cherry and leather, definitely look into this one.
Next, I want to mention a very fruity fragrance, and that is Mula Mula Rouge Extreme. This, of course, it's not just about cherries. This has a combination of different fruits. I think there is um, strawberry and raspberry here as well. Of course, there is also caramel in here and there is oud. And there are many other notes, but these are really kind of the main players. And so for me, it's this beautiful fruitiness that comes from the three fruits that I mentioned already. And they're drizzled with this um, caramel, which makes it really juicy and really sweet and really delicious. And then you have this uh, beautiful oud base that is supporting uh, these fruits and kind of makes it stronger and makes it more interesting. So to me, this is a, a really, I would still classify this as a really fruity, gourmand type of fragrance. Next, I want to mention a fragrance that was actually, I think, my very first cherry scent. And this one is no longer part of my collection. This transitioned to my daughter's collection, just because, you know, once I've tried a few other cherry scents, this one wasn't my favorite, but I think it's still worth mentioning. This is Sweet from Lolita Lempica. So there you go. This is, like I said, part of my daughter's collection, but she let me <laughs> borrow it for this video. So this one, of course, also has cherry. I think it also has some other fruits, maybe raspberry. It has some citruses, like mandarin, I think. Um, I can't remember what else is in here. If there are any um, florals or something, I don't know. But this one really kind of smells to me um, like some kind of cherry candy. To me, it has a bit of a candy vibe and it also has very young vibe. Like I think that's why it moved to my daughter's collection and she, by the way, really, really enjoys this scent. Uh, it, it's very young. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's just very young. It's a little bit powdery as well. And overall, it's kind of a candied cherry. So it's not exactly for me at this point, but I think it is still a really nice and uh, quite affordable cherry scent that's, you know, again, not similar to Lost Cherry. This, this is not similar to it at all. And so that's why I wanted to include it here as well. And the last one that I wanted to mention here is one of the most um, interesting and I think intriguing cherry scents that I have tried. This one comes from a Canadian uh, indie house, Melic Parfums, and it has a long name, very cherry, rose, chocolate, patchouli. There you go. Uh, I only have a sample, although I would really love to get um, a full bottle of this. This fragrance is a powerhouse. It is very, very strong. It is very potent. It is definitely not for everyone, but I love it. I think it is stunning because it features all of the notes that I love. It has strong cherry note, it has strong rose note, and it has a strong patchouli note. In fact, I think there are uh, four different types of patchouli in included in here. I can't remember what else is in here, but you know, you have this really, really potent, sweet cherry, you have rose, you have really strong patchouli. It almost has um, some chocolate qualities to this as well. I'm not sure if this is coming from patchouli or, or if there are actually chocolate notes in here. I'm not sure, but all of that is present in here. Patchouli is very, very strong in here. In fact, all of the three main elements are quite strong. So you have to like all three, rose, cherry, and patchouli to enjoy this fragrance, you know? But luckily for me, because I do love all three notes, this is a stunning, stunning powerhouse of a fragrance, and I definitely plan to get a full bottle in the future. So there you go. These were some of my favorite cherry fragrances and my thoughts on the new release from Aaron Terrence Hughes called 
uh, raw cherry. Would love to know if you enjoyed this note, what are your favorite fragrances featuring this note, and have you tried raw cherry or are you interested in trying it? Definitely let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you soon in the next video. Bye!